Paul, when he talks about communion, it's his longest uh, quote of Jesus directly in 1 Corinthians 11. This is another passage that describes the Lord's Supper. I'm going to read this to you. He says this, for I pass on to you what I received from the Lord himself. Pause there. So the apostle Paul was not one of the original 12 disciples. You remember this? He at the time hated Christians. He hated what Jesus stood for and he was persecuting Christians. He later got saved after the resurrection of Jesus on the road to Damascus. Jesus appeared to him, knocked him on his high knee and converted him by the power of God. Okay, that's pretty cool by itself. But then to make things even cooler for the apostle Paul, Jesus personally instructed him and trained him for ministry. What I received from the Lord himself. In other words, he's saying, Jesus is the one who taught me what he said at the Lord's Supper. That's, that's just really cool to emphasize that. Okay, he says this. On the night when he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. Then he broke it in pieces and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this in remembrance of me as often as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Okay, now I want to point out this next part. This maybe is a part you haven't read. So anyone who eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord unworthily is guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. That is why you should examine yourself before eating the bread and drinking the cup. For if you eat the bread or drink the cup without honoring the body of Christ, you are eating and drinking God's judgment upon yourself. Watch this. That is why many of you are weak and sick and some have even died. This is not normal, not normally emphasized in your modern day 2023 seeker sensitive mega church. What is he talking about? There were people in the church in Corinth who were coming to church and some of them skipped lunch that day so they were stuffing themselves on the communion bread. Other people came to church and they were getting drunk on the communion wine. And the apostle Paul is saying, you are drinking God's judgment on yourself. And people were getting sick and even dying because of it. And so what does this mean for us? There are people that come to church today all across America, and although they have sin in their life that they haven't repented of, they'll take communion like everything's fine, do do do, and they're drinking God's judgment on themselves. They're not honoring the body and blood of Christ, which was sacrificed for us. How do you take communion? Be like, oh yeah, thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for my sins. That was super cool of you. While you're living in unrepentant sin, like it doesn't even matter. That doesn't honor God. Now, here's a disclaimer, right? All of us sin in ways that we're probably not even aware of. Through sins of omission or commission, things that we didn't do or should do. And so we should try to repent of sin to the best of our ability. There will always be sins in our lives that we're not really, really aware of. You know, I should have been nicer. I should have been more generous. I should have had more faith. And so we trust the grace of God to cover those sins. But when there is sin that we're consciously aware of, we should confess it and repent from it, turning to God and righteousness. So an example might be, you know, you got a guy comes to church, he's been living with his girlfriend, they're sleeping together, they're not married, they're living in sexual sin, and then they take communion without repenting from their sin, and they're drinking and eating God's judgment on themselves. What's, what's going to happen to him? I don't know. But it didn't go well for these guys. <laughs> the church in Corinth. So I would recommend doing something about that. You know, here, here's what he says in verse 31. But if we would examine ourselves, we would not be judged by God in this way. 
Yet when we are judged by the Lord, we're being disciplined so that we will not be condemned along with the world. Okay, so I know that was kind of scary. You hear that? You're like, oh, I don't know if I want to take communion. But he says, no, 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 you don't got to worry about it. Just judge yourself. If you would examine yourself and say, hey, Lord, search me. Show me if there's anything in my life that I need to repent from today. And then if the Holy Spirit brings something to your mind, just confess that to God, repent of that sin, and receive the mercy of Jesus, which was bought for you. The grace of God was, was already paid for by Jesus on the cross. And you, you're reminded of that as you take communion. You're like, I'm forgiven because Jesus' blood was shed for that sin. I don't have to leave here with guilt because Jesus died for my sin. And then what he said in verse 32 was that when the Lord does discipline us, scripture says the father disciplines the son whom he loves. When the Lord does discipline, sometimes God does, does allow us, you know, like to, to, to experience things the hard way. We have to learn the hard way sometimes. Anybody else beside me had to learn a lot of lessons the hard way? Whew, I learned too many lessons the hard way. And the Lord's discipline was actually meant to, to kind of get me back on path. On the path, right? The Lord disciplines the son whom he loves so that we won't be condemned along with the world to hell. It's better to be spanked by God in the short run and not go to hell in the long run. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) God's good to us. He's good to us. So you got to think about that before you take communion. You want to examine yourself and just say, hey, Lord, show me if there's anything in my life I need to confess to you.